This was the sound of Mars, recorded by NASA's Perseverance in 2022. And this is how Mars sounds in the movies. We all know that no one can hear you scream in a vast expanse of space, but that doesn't mean the plants aren't emitting sound. They do, and scientists are recording them. So if you want to see how they do it, what the planets in our solar system sound like, and how they compare to what we see in the movies, this video is for you. No spoiler alert, it's quite mad. We start with Mercury, which is closest to the Sun. It's very creepy, like something from Alien film. It sounds like it's alive, ready to jump scare us. Now I found a couple of clips from films. In Danny Boyle's 2007 Sunshine, Mercury emits a low frequency rumble. Obviously, they wouldn't be able to hear that on the spaceship. Ladies and gentlemen, Mercury. In 2011 Collision Earth, we only hear an explosion of Mercury as it's thrown out of orbit uh, by the Sun, so nothing like the original. Venus is the next one. It's like a fallout post-apocalyptic siren that has never stopped after the world ended. In the movies, it sounds nothing like it. So, in the first spaceship on Venus from 1960, we can hear the gas and the air whooshes. outside work must stop, and we spend our time studying what we have found so far. In 2004, BBC Space Odyssey Voyage to the Planets, there's a low-frequency hit and ambience. It kind of reminds me of the OG Venus sounds, but not really. And we also have a clip from The Expanse, a TV series. Music overshadows everything, but we get a sound of the impact. Earth is the third planet. It's nice, it's peaceful, like being near the sea. Um, of course, we have a lot of movie portrayals of Earth. In Knowing, from 2009, we hear low air whooshes. It's kind of similar to the OG. In 2015 f 4 music overshadows the sound, but there is a low frequency rumble there. Not that similar to the original. Now, I love a good sci-fi story. It can be Interstellar, Gravity Arrival, or The Martian. But the thing with movies or TV series is that they can be persuasive. But movies are not documentaries, and the storytellers use hyperrealism to keep the emotions elevated. This is the story of our universe. The big question is, can a planet make a sound in space? Yes, they can, but not in a way we think of. In the 1990s, NASA explored the possibility of capturing and processing emissions from planets to hear them. So, do we actually hear the planets? And to be exact, no. But all of those emissions are collected by the probes in space, and then scientists can process and hear them. Next is Mars. It's windy, but we can hear some metal clanks.
Mars also features a lot in the movies, and you saw it at the beginning of this video. In 2013, the last days of Mars, the sound is quite similar, not as low, but it is windy. Campbell to Aldrich, come here, Kim. 2012 John Carter also presents Windy Mars, but it's a light breeze only. In a 2000 mission to Mars, we can hear the Windy Planet. So, all pretty good actually. Uh, they do like the OG's low end and weird sounds, but I think they do pass the test. Jupiter, a planet that sounds both peaceful and terrifying at the same time, like it wants to give us a false sense of security. Now, in Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey from 1968, we hear strange sounds, but they're more like vulcanizations than the planet itself. In 2019's The Wandering Earth, they focus on Jupiter's great red spot and the raging storm rather than the planet's sound. So, you know, it, it sounds stormy. Okay, Saturn. Uh, Saturn may be beautiful, but the sound is terrifying and sinister. In Nolan's 2014 Interstellar, we get a calmer Saturn. Underneath a music, there's a soft white noise for the planet. So it's not quite the same, but I think it's in the ballpark. I think Nolan wanted to match the beauty of the planet with the sound. While radio telescopes on Earth tune in to signals from distant sources, the interplanetary spacecraft sensors gather the data, and probes like Voyager, New Horizons, Cassini, Galileo, and others collect all that data in space and then transmit it back to Earth for further analysis. And similar to how our music players translate data into sounds, NASA's job was to take all that data gathered by the Voyager probe and convert it into sound waves. Uranus, it's cold, it's lonely, it could be a part of sci-fi game like Star Citizen. I couldn't find much on Uranus except this upcoming Thai movie, Uranus 2324. It's a trailer, so I assume none of the effects uh, is the planet's sound, but it will be interesting to see how they manage it in the movie. You can also watch the intro from 1962 Journey to Seventh Planet instead. It's a bit different to the original sound. Journey to the seventh planet. Neptune, the furthest planet, sounds peaceful, similar to Earth. Now we can't hear much in 1997 horror, even Horizon, because of the music. We can see Neptune in 2019 at Astra, but once again, it's all about the music. Well, it can't end here, right? Pluto. The dwarf planet sounds like a church song with chimes and bells and choir elements. In the BBC series Space Odyssey Voyage to the Planets, 
Pluto sounds remarkably similar to the original. There is that church feel when you listen to the sound underneath the music. And of course, where it all started, the sun. A low drone pulsating can destroy everything in a split second. Sun, you know, too was portrayed in many films and TV shows, like in Sunshine, they do focus on how the burning of the sun could sound. And the same in 2013 Exploding Sun. Nineteen ninety uh, solar crisis or two thousand nineteen solar impact. Um, it's kind of the same, and it seems like we see the fire, right, and the explosions, and that's what we want to hear. But that's not as scary as the original, at least in my view. Before we finish, we must talk about Mars. In 2022, thanks to the two microphones on NASA's Perseverance rover, we heard the actual sounds of Mars. These audio recordings from the Martian environment included a variety of sounds, from the gentle gust of Martian wind to the snap of the rover's laser striking a rock. These sounds are quieter and muted than what one would hear on Earth. Now, this is attributed to the Martian atmosphere's lower density and distinct composition. As reported by Scientific American, the practice of transforming non-acoustic data into sounds known as sonification can offer advantages to astronomers engaged in data analysis. Listening to data allows for enhanced understanding of celestial bodies, which is another step in space exploration. But it also could help filmmakers, directors and sound designers to make the planets in the films sound more realistic. That doesn't stop the filmmakers from giving the planets the sounds that fit the story. And you know, it's not a bad thing, because it's a fiction scape, it's a piece of art. But I wonder if we'll ever get to hear more truthful representation on big screen, or Michael Bay's take is the best we can do. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. <laughs>